Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today I'm going to test out a video on Walrasian general equilibrium. So let me know in the comments if this series of videos would be helpful for you, if you think it would be useful for me to do. So what I want to do in this video is I just want to lay out sort of the big idea of Walrasian equilibrium, which is of course a type of competitive equilibrium. Really what this boils down to is just a really math intensive version of the Edgeworth box. We're just going to make it more complicated. We're going to add prices. We're going to add production can basically add a lot of things to a general equilibrium model that we can show in an Edgeworth box. We just wanna be able to solve it mathematically with equations. And so as you're working through general equilibrium problems, a great thing to do is always to think about an Edgeworth box, maybe draw one out, think about how your particular question pertains to an Edgeworth box, try to use that Edgeworth box to help you figure out what exactly the answer should be, at least intuitively. And so while general equilibrium models come in a lot of flavors, basically they all have the same ingredients where you've got a bunch of people so I like to make up fun names for my agents because as I'm doing these problems, it's really helpful for me if I can step into this world and be like, okay, like today I'm Katara. I'm Katara who lives in this general equilibrium model. These are the things that I get to choose. This is what I'm doing. This is sort of my decision. Maybe I go work for a firm in the morning. I get paid. I got to go to the market and buy some coconuts. Like just thinking like as if I lived in this world is sometimes really helpful in figuring out the answer because you might think, well, it doesn't make sense. Like I wouldn't want to do that. So then like, why would the person in your model do that? It could sometimes be helpful. But so example, if I'm Katara, maybe I've got some labor, I get to choose how much to work. Maybe I own some land or I own some machines or something that I can rent to firms. Maybe I work for firms. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't work for firms. Maybe I don't need labor or capital at all. Maybe just every day I wake up and there's a certain number of coconuts that arrived in the box outside my door every morning. I gotta take those coconuts to the market, turn it into cash and go buy other things. Do I get to save? Do I get to buy assets by turning those coconuts into money? Like these are all questions that could come up in an Edgeworth box or in a general equilibrium model. And again, just put yourself in the shoes of someone in your model and try and think about exactly what they're choosing to use that to help you. Now on the other hand, some things are always gonna be a given. For example, I always got a utility function. And again, I can think about what that utility function tells me about my preferences. I've got some budget constraints, where exactly my income comes from in that budget constraint. Could be from all the ways we just talked about, in terms of savings, endowments, or like production, profits, wages. All of those things could factor into my budget. But fundamentally, what I'm doing as Katara in this model is I'm trying to maximize my utility subject to a budget constraint. And the amount of choices I can make vary, the amount of things that factor into the budget constraint can vary. But fundamentally, I'm just trying to solve a utility maximization problem. That's all I'm trying to do. Sort of the big questions that you're gonna get out of these general equilibrium models, especially if you're taking a test or trying to do a homework are things like, well, what is the equilibrium price and quantity? Or what is the equilibrium quantity? What is the Pareto optimal quantity? What is the Pareto optimal allocation? And so generally the way these questions work is you're gonna see something like, okay, what is the equilibrium price and quantity in this model? Okay, great, you found that. Well, now can you tell me if that equilibrium is Pareto optimal or not? Okay, so you gotta think about what the Pareto optimal would be, You're solving a social planners problem without prices. And then if not, if the equilibrium you got is not the same as the Pareto optimal allocation, if the equilibrium allocation is not in the Pareto set, then the question is gonna be, well, how could you push the market? How could you tweak the market a little bit in order for the competitive equilibrium allocation to be the Pareto optimal allocation or to be in the Pareto set? Now, of course, there's a bunch of different ways you can solve this because it's gonna be a lot of equations. I like to sort of follow a general flow. It sort of depends on the question, of course, and I'll try to point this out as I'm doing example problems. But in general, what I like to do is I like to solve the firm profit maximization first, especially if I'm Katara and I own a firm. Well, then my wage is gonna feed into my budget constraint as income. My profit might feed into my budget constraint as income. So I don't wanna solve the utility maximization problem yet. If both of these things go into my budget constraint, into my utility maximization problem, I would like to know what these are before I start that utility maximization problem. And generally, if I solve the firm profit maximization problem first, that's generally gonna help me. I'm gonna have more information for the utility maximization problem. And then once I have that, I'm gonna solve the agent utility maximization problem. I'm gonna figure out their consumption, their labor choice, their savings, any choice variables, any sort of state variables that are happening. I just wanna solve the agent's utility maximization problem because once I figure that out, then I have basically everything I need between the firm profit maximization problem and the utility maximization problem. I have everything I need to find allocations and prices in equilibrium 
and then I can go back and solve the problem again without prices using a social planner problem. But if I've already solved the equilibrium, I'm probably gonna have a good idea of how the math works for the social planner problem, and it'll probably be easier. On the other hand, some of you might find it easier to solve this for the social planner problem first, find the Pareto set, find the Pareto optimal allocation, and then worry about prices and find equilibrium. There's again, a lot of flexibility in how you solve it. And so as I'm going through, if you disagree or you think there's a better way to solve it, feel free to put that in the comments and we can sort of have a discussion about pros and cons of different ways to approach these problems. Again, please leave a comment if you would like to see more of these videos. But overall, if this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.